Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary. I am very glad you are here. We have some great words to teach you all about today. Um, we Let's see, we're getting real close to the end of the year. Um, oh, I probably should have said, um, oh boy, I believe the last episode of The Bees was the first day of Hanukkah. So I am very sorry. Uh, we are well past that. We've even passed the, the eighth day. Uh, so I hope that everybody had a good Hanukkah. Uh, Christmas is coming up. Uh, I should probably find out what days Kwanzaa lands on because uh, I'm a terrible human being and I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, and yeah, so uh, hey, let's let's get going on this. The first word is Cairngorm. I, I think that's how it's pronounced, give or take. C-A-I-R-N-G-O-R-M. Noun from 1794. Uh, this is probably related to the last one uh, in the last episode, Cairn, so it's probably Scottish. It is a yellow or smoky brown crystalline quartz. Mm. Uh, and this is from Cairngorm, which is a mountain in Scotland. Ooh, maybe we should find a picture of the mountain and the quartz that comes from the mountain. Um, I'm curious, though, what, so it, it's got the, this word cairn in there. Um, did which came first did uh did people make cairns these heap of stones to mimic what the mountain looked like uh or and and which was already named named cairn gorm which is hard to say or was it the other way around i'm so curious about this all right next is cairn terrier noun from 1910 any of a breed of small compactly built hard-coated terriers of scottish origin and this is from its use in hunting among cairns. So does that mean that they would look for maybe little rodents inside the cairns, like in between the rocks? Oh, there's a there's a cat who wants to get in the room. Um, or did they just run around the cairns and chase things? I don't know. But we'll, we'll post a picture of this cairn terrier. Next is caisson, or caisson, C-A-I-S-S-O-N, a uh, noun from... Circa 1702, 1A, a chest to hold ammunition. 1B, a usually two-wheeled vehicle for artillery ammunition attachable to a horse-drawn limber. Also, a limber with its attached caisson or caisson. 2A, a watertight chamber used in construction work underwater or as a foundation. 2B, a hollow floating box or a boat used as a floodgate for a dock or basin. And number three, just the number three definition for the word coffer. Um, so let's see, this is from Old Occitan, caissa, which means chest, uh, from the Latin capsa, and there's more at the word case. Next is caisson disease, two words, noun from 1873, and we just have the synonym decompression sickness. Uh, is this what they also call the bends when you're uh, scuba diving? Uh, maybe the more uh, official name is caisson disease. All right, next we have caitiff, C-A-I-T-I-F-F, adjective from the 14th century. Synonyms are cowardly and despicable. Despicable me, caitiff me. Uh, caitiff is also a noun. And uh, let's see, this is from Anglo-French, caitiff or chaitiff, which means wretched or despicable. Also from the Latin, captivus, which means captive. Next we have kajaput or kajaput, C-A-J-E-P-U-T, kajaput. Noun from 1822, an Australian and Southeast Asian tree of the myrtle family, that yields a pungent medicinal oil and has been introduced into Florida. The scientific name is uh, Malaluca quinquenervia. quinquenervia. <laughs> Malaluca quinquenervia. Uh, and also, uh, me, oh, I think it's Melaluca. Melaluca uh, leucadendron. That one was a little bit easier. So this is ultimately from the Malay word Kayu Puti, Kayu Puti, uh, C, uh, sorry, K-A-Y-U-P-U-T-I-H, that's two words, uh, which is from Kayu, which is the word, uh, which means wood or tree, and then Puti, which means white. So it's a white 
white tree, basically. And boy, Audrey, I can hear you trying to get in here, and you're probably clawing up the door, so please don't do that. I will let you in when I'm done recording this one. Okay, next is cajole, C-A-J-O-L-E, verb from 1630. Um, And I think this is just transitive. Uh, 1A, to persuade with flattery or gentle urging, especially in the face of reluctance. Synonym is coax, as in, had to cajole them into going. Audrey is trying to cajole me into letting her into the room right now. But I'm all wired in and I'm sitting here, so hold on. Uh, 1B, to obtain from someone by gentle persuasion, as in, cajoled money from his parents. 2. To deceive with soothing words or false promises. Cajolement is a noun. Uh, And, oh, cajoler is also a noun, and cajolery is also a noun. And then we have some synonym information. Cajole, coax, soft soap, blandish, and wheedle mean to influence or persuade by pleasing words or actions. Cajole suggests the deliberate use of flattery to persuade in the face of reluctance or reasonable objections, as in, cajoled him into cheating on the final exam. Well, that wasn't very nice. Why did he do that? Uh, Coax implies gentle and persistent words or actions employed to produce a desired effect, as in, coaxed the cat out of the tree. I am getting coaxed by a cat. Soft soap which is exactly how it sounds, but it's two words with a hyphen. Soft soap refers to using smooth and somewhat insincere talk, usually for personal gain, as in politicians soft soaping eligible voters. Blandish implies a more open desire to win a person over by effusive praise and affectionate actions as in legislators blandished with promises of support. And Wheedle, W-H-E-E-D-L-E, I want to say Wheedle, Wheedle suggests more strongly than cajole the use of seductive appeal or artful words in persuading, as in hucksters wheedling her life savings out of her. That's terrible. Uh, Okay, next is the word Cajun, capital C-A-J-U-N, Or, I had no idea about this, or you could spell it C-A-J-A-N. First form, noun from 1868. A Louisianian descended from French-speaking immigrants from Acadia. Where's Acadia? Uh, Oh, and it's an alternative of Acadian. So it sounds like they kind of simplified that and shortened it to just Cajun, uh, which was probably done, um, you know, maybe they pronounced it Acadian, A-C-A-D-I-A-N, I would say Acadian, but they probably said Acadian, and then they took off the A, and it just became Cajun. Ooh, I learned something. Okay, second form of Cajun, adjective from 1880, one, of relating to or characteristic of the Cajuns, two, of relating to or prepared in a style of cooking originating among the Cajuns and characterized by the use of hot seasonings as cayenne pepper. I very much love food that is Cajun flavored. Uh, But obviously for me, it's got to be vegan. Uh, Okay, last word for this episode is cake, C-A-K-E. Oh, I had some cake last night. It was good. Uh, All right, this is the first form. Second form will be in tomorrow's episode. This is a noun from the 13th century. 1A, a bread-like food made from a dough or batter that is usually fried or baked in a small f- in small flat shapes and is often unleavened. 1b. A sweet baked food made from a dough or thick batter usually containing flour and sugar and often shortening eggs and a raising agent as baking powder. It is the powder that you use when you bake. 1c a flattened, usually round mass of food that is baked or fried, as in a fish cake. 2a, a a block of compacted or congealed matter, as in a cake of ice. Mm. 2b, a hard or brittle layer or deposit. 3, something easily done, as in after so much studying, the test was cake. I would 
I, 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 it seems the test was cake. Who, who says that? The test was cake. I guess some people say it. Uh, I would, I would just say the test was a piece of cake, which I guess is equally strange, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, and then cakey, C-A-K-E-Y, is an adjective. So we had Cairn Gorm, Cairn Terrier, Kaysan, uh, Kaysan Disease, Caitiff, uh, Kajaput. I'm sort of looking at the definitions to remind me of what these are. Uh, Kajaput, that is a tree. Kajol, Cajun, and Cake. Well, I think I would like to pick Cajun as the word of the episode because I very much like Cajun food. Uh, That's all I got for you today. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information, and now I'm going to go let the cat in so she stops messing with the door. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, So, as promised, I let in the cat. This is Audrey. Um... And uh, yeah, she came in. She she was checking checking things out. Uh, we we try not to let them into the bedroom uh, as much as possible, but sometimes it happens. Um, and so now she is chilling on the pillow. Finally, uh, which is the pillow that I I, I just put under my knees uh, as I'm sitting here on the bed recording. Uh, so yeah, I, I took a picture. Uh, maybe I'll post that on Instagram if you are lucky, or if you uh, oh, or maybe I'll just put it as a Patreon exclusive if you. No, that's mean. I'll put it on Instagram. Okay, the first word is cake. C-A-K-E. Second form. Verb from 1607. One synonym is encrust, as in caked with dust. Two, to fill a space with packed mass. Uh, That was transitive. Now we have intransitive. To form or harden into a mass. Next we have cakewalk. One word, noun from 1874. One, a black American entertainment having a cake as prize for the most accomplished steps and figures in walking. What? What is this? Uh, Sorry, I feel very dumb that I don't know about this, but I think I might need to look more into it. A black American entertainment having a cake as prize for the most accomplished steps and figures in walking. Okay, well, let's finish this up and maybe we'll come back to that. Number two, a stage dance developed from walking steps and figures typically involving a high prance with backward tilt. Okay, yeah, I feel very dumb that I'm not aware of this exactly, uh, but, you know, maybe maybe there's a video that we can find that shows this. 3A, a one-sided contest. It was a cakewalk. That's like easy as cake. Uh, the 3B, an easy task. Cakewalk is an intransitive verb as well, and cakewalker is a noun. So the only real familiarity I have with this is, uh, it's like a, like a circus game kind of, uh, you, you, you pay some money and you pick a number and you go stand on that number and they have all the numbers on the floor, on the ground. And then, uh, I think you, maybe they play some music and then, uh, how does something like that? I don't know. I probably have this wrong, but you walk around, um... And then, oh, maybe if you land on whatever number, you win a cake, something like that. I'm sure if I thought about it more, I could come up with exactly how it works. Um, When I was a kid, my elementary school had a a whole like circus day thing. And uh, my parents were usually helping out involved in that. And my mom was sort of running the cakewalk one day and I was helping her out. I was probably like seven or eight years old. And uh and uh, we, we had somebody, another assistant who was like a high school kid. He was helping us out. And so we, uh, we, we pooled our money or we did something and he went and played the cakewalk for us and we won. We won a cake. I was so excited. I was this little kid who won a cake even though I didn't do anything. All right. But we're going to have to figure out what this other cakewalk dance thing is. Next is CAL, C-A-L, abbreviation for small calorie. Not... I think K-Cal would be a big calorie, kill a calorie, but this is just Cal. It's a small little eensy weensy calorie. Next is Cal with a capital C. This is an abbreviation for one, California. Two, oh, large calorie. Here's large calorie. Uh, okay, so we you, little C is small calorie and big C is large calorie. All right, next is Calabar Bean. Capital C-A-L-A-B-A-R. Second word, bean. Noun from 1864. The dark brown, highly poisonous, leguminous seed of a tropical West African woody vine. 
that is used as a source of fisotigym. What? Uh, fisotigym, something like that, and was used formerly as an ordeal poison in African witch tr- witchcraft trials. And this is from Calabar, Nigeria. And the scientific name of this vine is Fisotigma ven- venenosum. That looks like venom, sort of, but not exactly. Okay, next is Calabash. Noun from 1596. One, a tropical American tree of the Bignonia family. Also, it's large, hard-shelled, globose fruit. And the scientific name is Crescentia cujete, or cujete, or cujet, something. Number two, synonym is gourd, especially one whose hard shell is used for a utensil. What are you using a, a gourd for to scoop up your food? Maybe they're small ones that can be used as spoons? Three, a utensil as a bottle or a uh, uh, dipper. I thought it said diaper for a second. A bottle or dipper made from the shell of a calabash. Uh, and this is the a French, French and Spanish calabas, which is a gourd from Spanish calabasa, uh, which is our next word. Uh, but now Audrey wants to leave. Why do you want to leave? You spent so much energy trying to get in here, and now you want to leave? Just, uh, just, just curl up and and sleep for a little bit. Okay. Next is calabasa or calabaza. Noun from 1970, a large winter squash that resembles a pumpkin and is typically grown in the West Indies and tropical America. And the scientific name is curcurbita or curcurbita moschata. This is a Spanish word. Next is calaboose. Uh, Calaboose, yeah, noun from 1792. Synonym is jail, especially a local jail. And this is from the Spanish word calaboso, which means dungeon. Uh, I hope that the jails aren't aren't like dungeons, because uh, that's pretty bad. But, you know, maybe if, if the cops want to get creative, they can make, make it look like a dungeon so it's more authentic. Next is caladium. Noun from 1881. Any of a genus of tropical American plants of the Arum family, widely cultivated for their showy, variably colored leaves. We've got lots of plants in this episode. Uh, Let's see. The genus name is Caladium, and then especially, I think this might be the scientific name, Caladium bicolor or bicolor, or I don't know how you pronounce that, but it looks like bicolor. We have lights at work that are bicolor, which means you can change the color from tungsten to daylight. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, So this is from the genus name, which is from the Malay word Caladi, K-E-L-A-D-I, which is an aeroid plant. Aeroid is A-R-O-I-D. Next, we have calamander. Uh, It's like salamander, but it's with a K sound. Calamander, noun from 1804. The hazel hazel brown black striped wood of a Southeast Asian tree that is used in furniture manufacturing. And the scientific, the genus name is Diasporos, and especially the scientific name Diasporos Kaisita, or Kuaisita, Q-U-A-E-S-I-T-A. And then this is, um, it's, it's a Dutch, from a Dutch word, which is calamander wood. So maybe we should find a picture of this calamander hazel brown black striped wood. It sounds kind of interesting. Next we have calamari, C-A-L-A-M-A-R-I. I emphasize the I for a very specific reason, which you, you will find out shortly. This is a noun from circa 1961, and it is squid used as a food. So this is Italian, uh, from, uh, it's the plural of calamaro, or calamayo, which is from the Middle Latin calamarium, which is an ink pot, from the Latin calamus, which is from the inky substance the squid secretes. Yucky. Okay, so next we have calamari, but there is a Y instead of an I. And so why, how is this different? It is a noun from 1567. Uh, So for one thing, it's uh, 400 years earlier, and the synonym is just squid. 
so squid is calamari with an with a y uh cala maybe it's calamari calamari and then calamari or also calamari is the the squid used as food so you what, what do you think you're trying to get away with you change one letter and it goes from an animal to a food that seems odd um okay next is kalamata and this is a variation of kalamata with a k instead of a c uh like kalamata olives next is calamine or you could just say calamine noun from the 15th century a mixture of zinc oxide with a small amount of ferric oxide used in lotions liniments and ointments and this is from middle english calamine which is an ore of zinc um, from this. That's pretty good. Okay, next is calamint, noun from the 14th century. Any of a genus of Eurasian perennial mints. Scientific name is calamintha. And, uh, and then there's another one, satur, satureja, satureja. And then especially the scientific name calamintha nepeta, nepeta. Um, I think we are good with that. There's some etymology, but it's just different forms of the word from different languages. And last for this episode is calamite, C-A-L-A-M-I-T-E, noun from 1837, a Paleozoic fossil plant resembling a giant horsetail, especially the genus name calamites, something like that. Uh, and then this is from Calamites, which is the genus of fossil plants uh, from the Latin calamus. So there's a bunch of these words that have the C-A-L-A prefix. And I don't know if that means something specifically. Why are they related? Somehow, uh, maybe they'll just the last couple are. Anyway, we had cake, cakewalk, cal, cal, calabarbean, calabash, calabaza, calabus, Caladium, calamander, calamari, calamari, calamata, calamine, calamint, and calamite. Hmm. I'm not sure if any of these are really jumping out at me. I'm not thinking. I don't know a whole lot about this cakewalk thing. I don't want to be offensive in any way. Uh, lots of plants. Um. Oh, have that in the middle. Uh, hmm, this is this is, dif- this is very difficult. This, this is very hard for me. Um, well, uh, since I don't think I did it in the last one, I'm just going to pick... Well, no. See, that's a whole different cake. That's verb, not the noun cake. Uh, why can this be so difficult sometimes? So we have a fossil plant. We have a mint. We have uh, uh, something used in ointments. We've got squid. We've got wood. We've got so many different things in this episode. We've got a, an, um, what is this, a, a, some sort of plant. Uh, we've got a jail. Yeah, let's pick calaboose. Calaboose as the word of the episode because it is a dungeon. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. And sometimes he doesn't talk so good. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, so Audrey the cat has... She, she stopped trying to get out of the room, uh, and then she just went and chilled on the radiator, which is should be very nice and warm. Uh, okay, N- so let's talk about these words. We are at the end of page 173. I just drank a little tea, so there might be a burp coming. We'll, we'll find out. Let's see what the future brings. So the first word is calamitous. C-A-L-A-M-I-T-O-U-S. Adjective from the, f- uh, the 1545. Being causing or accompanied by calamity, as in calamitous events, and calamitously is an adverb. Next is calamity. If you don't know what that is from the last definition, now you can learn about it here. Noun from the 15th century. One, a state of deep distress or misery caused by major misfortune or loss. Two, a disastrous event marked by great loss and lasting distress and suffering, as in calamities of nature, also as in an economic calamity. I think we are living through an economic calamity at the moment, and um, I was listening to some podcast where they were talking about it, the you know, sort of the economic problems that are going to come from this, and 
unless some major things are done, like major changes in policies and politics and stimulus checks and things like that, uh, this is going to have very, very, very long-lasting effects. Uh, what we are going through right now, how many people are out of work, uh, you know, it, this unless some major changes happen, happen, this is just going to make the divide between the rich and the poor even bigger, uh, which we really don't need. That's that's not helping anything. Um, yeah. So let's hey, let's get this fixed, people. Uh, okay, back the word back to the words. This is from the Latin word uh, clades, clades, which means destruction. Next is. Kalamandin, C-A-L-A-M-O-N-D-I-N, Kalamandin, noun from circa 1928, a small hybrid citrus tree, also its small tart fruit resembling the mandarin and used especially in marmalades. Kalamandin, the scientific name, there's a couple, it is Citrofortunella mitis and Citrus mitis, Citrus mitis. Uh, and then this is from a tag word. Is that, I think it's Tagalog. That's the name of the, the language. Uh, ta- Tagalog. Tagalog. Uh, I remember seeing that before. I can't remember where it is from. But Tagalog word, Kalamunding. K-A-L-A-M-U-N-D-I-N-G. Uh, which is, I wonder where, I should find out where that's from. Okay. Next is Calamus. Noun from the 14th century. 1A. Synonym is sweet flag. Okay, I don't know who's eating flags to find out if they're sweet or salty, but that's a sweet flag. 1B. The aromatic peeled and dried rhizome of the sweet flag that is the source of carcinogenic essential oil. And number two. The hollow basal portion of a feather below the vein. Synonym is quill. I still don't know what a sweet flag is, but let's look at the etymology. It is a Latin word, which means reed or reed pen from Greek kalamos. And there's more at the word halm, H-A-U-L-M, halm. Next is kalash, noun from 1679, 1A, a light, small, wheeled, four-passenger carriage with a folding top, 1B, uh, we have the 1B definition for the word, well, I, I'm assuming it's pronounced similarly, kalesh, kalash. It is spelled C-A-L-E-C-H-E, and there's an accent over the first E, kalesh. Uh, so yeah, it looks like they just changed the spelling. And number two, a large wo- no, a large hood worn by women in the 18th century, a kalash. This is from French, kalesh, from Greek, kalesh, from Czech, kolesa, which means wheels or carriage, akin to the Greek kiklos, which means wheel, and there's more at the word wheel. Next is calc, C-A-L-C, abbreviation for calculate or calculated, and then I want to throw in my own calculon. Next is the prefix calc or Calci or calci, C A L C I. Uh, this it just means uh, calcium, calcium or calcium salt, as in calcic or calcify. And uh, this is from the Latin prefix calc or calx, C A L X, which means lime. And there's more at the word chalk. Next is calcaneal, C A L C A N. E-A-L, adjective from circa 1849, relating to the heel or calcaneus. Well, before we get to calcaneus, we have to read calcanium. Uh, This is a, um, where'd it go? A noun from circa 1751, and we just have the synonym calcaneus. Everything is just leading us to calcaneus. Uh, But this one is also from, uh, it's a Latin word, which means heel, and there's more at the word chalk. And then here we go with calcaneus, noun from circa 1925, a tarsal bone that in humans is the large bone of the heel. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the heel bone, calcaneus. Uh, okay, if you, if oh, I wonder, I have, um, I have X-rays of my foot when I had my foot injury back in uh, a while ago, 
And uh, so I wonder if I can get get a if I can if I can get that and post it to Instagram or something, and you can see my calcaneus bone. All right, next is calcareous. We had calcaneus, and now we have calcareous. Uh, this is an adjective from 1677. 1A, resembling calcite or calcium carbonate, especially in hardness. 1B, consisting of or containing calcium carbonate, also containing calcium. 2, growing on limestone or in soil impregnated with lime. And calcareously is an adverb. Uh, this is just from the Latin uh, calcareous, which means of lime. Next is calcic, C-A-L-C-I-C, adjective from 1868, derived from or containing calcium or lime, also rich in calcium. Next is calcicol, C-A-L-C-I-C-O-L-E, noun from 1882, a plant normally growing on calcareous soils. So that would be Soils that are probably rich in calcium and lime and stuff, stuff like that. Um, and then cal, calcicolous. Calcicolous is an adjective. Okay, next is calciferol. Noun from 1931. An alcohol, C28, H43. That's a lot of H. O, H. So again, we had the H's separated for some reason. Um, and so it's an alcohol usually prepared by irradiation of ergosterol and used as a dietary supplement in nutrition and medicinally in the control of rickets and related disorders, called also just vitamin D2. So vitamin D2 is calciferol. All right, next is calciferous, adjective from 1799. And uh, yeah. This is producing or containing calcium carbonate. Or you, maybe some people like to say carbonate. I don't know. And our last word is calcific. C-A-L-C-I-F-I-C. Adjective from 1861. Involving or caused by calcification. As in calcific lesions. So we had calamitous, calamity, calamondin. That is the citrus tree. Calamus. That is a sweet flag, kalash. Uh, it's a carriage, calc, calc, or cals, calcaneal, uh, calcanium, calcaneous, calcareous, calcic, calcicol, calciferol, calciferous, and calcific. Uh, let's see. Um, I think, you know, I'm going to pick calamity as the word of the episode. Uh, like I said, we are in this economic calamity uh, that was the example that they gave, and it just reminded me that that is very much what we are living through. Uh, so, uh, you know, do what you can to uh, help people so we can get out of this calamity right now. Uh, yeah, just do do what you can to make yourself happy and help others, which will also make you happy. Uh, I know I say these things a lot, but I'm going to say them a lot because it's very true, um, and it needs to happen. So, yeah, that's, that's all I got. See if you can... Uh, if there is somebody out there who is like, why would I want to help somebody? Maybe you can change their mind and you can, you know, get them to live more uh, with live more with empathy and compassion. That's all I got to say today. We have a uh, finished 173 rate and review and subscribe and share and uh, do all that good stuff. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Today is Christmas Eve for... Those of you who celebrate Christmas, happy Christmas Eve. Uh, and, you know, uh, let's see. Hopefully uh, you get some stuff tomorrow and you're, there's no coal on the floor waiting for you. All right. So this episode is filled with scientific words, um, almost all of them. Uh, yeah. So we are at the top of page uh, 174. And again, we have a little problem with the... Uh, the words it's at the at the top of the page it says the first word of the page is calcification which it is not and then the last word is california condor which it is but why is it saying that calcification is the first word when it's the first word is actually calcifuge where did calcification it's not even in here is it Calci- i don't think so the last word was was calcific there's no calcification 
It got deleted. All right. So calcifuge, uh, C-A-L-C-I-F-U-G-E, is a noun from 1926, a plant not normally growing on calcareous soils. And I think we read that in the last episode. If you want to learn what calcareous is, calcifuge, also calcifugus, calcifugus, those are adjectives. Um, this is from the calc prefix uh, plus the Latin word fugere, which means to flee. So the calc, I think that has to do with lime, uh, lime, calcium salt. Yeah, that, that sort of stuff. And then it's fleeing. All right, the next word is calcify, verb from 1854. One, to make calcareous by deposit of calcium salts. Two, to make inflexible or unchangeable. Those were transitive. Now we have intransitive. One, to become calcareous. Two, to become inflexible and changeless. Synonym is harden. And calcification is a noun. And is there... No, there's no etymology. Uh, I'm recording this after being awake for oh, basically one hour. So my voice is deeper than it normally is. It hasn't warmed up, uh, but I kind of like it. I think maybe I should record all of these right after I wake up. All right, next we have calcimine. Uh, yeah, calcimine, noun from circa 1859. A white or tinted wash of glue, whitening or zinc white, and water that is used especially on plastered surfaces. Calcimine is also a transitive verb. This is, well, this isn't helpful. This is an alternative of calcimine with a K instead of a C, uh, K-A-L-S-O-M-I-N-E, which is of known origin. Thanks. Now we have calcination. It's a nation full of calcium. Noun from the 14th century, the act or process of calcining, uh, and also the state of being calcined. Uh, if you are curious about the word calcine, let's read that now. It is the word calcine. Uh, you could pronounce it either calcine or calcine. First form, verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive. To heat as, organ- as inorganic materials to a high temperature but without fusing in order to drive off volatile matter or to effect changes as oxidation or pulverization. That was a very long single definition for transitive, and now we have a very short definition for intransitive, which just says to undergo calcination. Um, Then this is, yeah, it's all about lime, the Latin word calcina, lime, calc, calx. Next is the second form of calcine, a noun from circa 1909, a product, as a metal oxide, of calcination or roasting. So when you roast something, it becomes calcine? Uh, Okay, I said this was full of scientific words. Oh, there might be a sneeze. Uh, Next is calcinosis. (coughs) There it is. Calcinosis. I had, uh, there there was a nose joke in there somewhere, but I don't know where it is. This is a noun from circa 1929. The abnormal uh, deposition of calcium salts in a part or tissue of the body. Um, That is good for that. Next we have calcite. C-A-L-C-I-T-E. Noun from 1849. A mineral, C-A-C-O-3, consisting of calcium carbonate crystallized... Oh, calcium carbonate crystallized in hexagonal form and including common limestone, chalk, and marble, and compared to aragonite. It's like Aragorn turned into a rock. Calcitic is an adjective. Next we have calcitonin. Calcitonin. Uh, This is a noun from 1961. A polypeptide hormone, especially from the thyroid gland, that lowers the level of calcium in the blood plasma, called also thyrocalcitonin. Thyrocalcitonin. Uh, And then this is from the prefix calci plus the suffix tonin, as in serotonin. I hope that if there's any kids listening, I hope that all these words make you super interested into going into science and learning about all this stuff. 
Uh, and if it doesn't, you know, wait till the next episode. Maybe there will be something good there. All right, next word is calcium. This is a very, very important thing to us. Uh, this is a noun from 1808. A silver white divalent metallic element of the alkaline earth group occurring only in combination. And then it says to see the element table. Uh, and it is from the Latin prefix calc, which means lime. Next is calcium carbide, noun from circa 1888, a usually dark gray crystalline compound, Ca, C2, used especially for the generation of acetylene and for making calcium cyanamide. Yep. Next is calcium carbonate, two words, noun from 1869, a compound, CaCO3, uh, found in nature as calcite and aragonite, and in plant ashes, bones, and shells, and used especially in making lime and Portland cement, and as a gastric, gastric antacid. It's very uh, versatile in its uses. Calcium carbonate or carbonate. Next is calcium channel blocker, three words. Noun from 1980, any of a class of drugs as verapamil, no, verapamil, that prevent or slow the influx of calcium ions into smooth muscle cells and are used especially to treat some forms of angina pectoris and some cardiac arrhythmias. Well, that seems very helpful because those are bad. But you can also stop, you can help to prevent those things by exercising and eating right. Next is calcium chloride, two words, noun from 1869, a white deliquescent salt, Ca, Cl2, used in its anhydrous state. I think that's like not, not, uh, no water, you know, why am I blanking on the word? Uh, anhydrous, it's not, no, it's, it hasn't been watered yet, it hasn't drank its water. Um, when it's used in its, in its anhydrous state, as a drying and dehumidifying agent and in a hydrated state for controlling dust and ice in roads. So it can be used in both hydrous states. Next is calcium cyanamide. Uh, that second word is C-Y-A-N-A-M-I-D-E. It's like cyan, the color cyan, plus some other letters. Noun from circa 1893, a compound, C-A-C and 2, used as a fertilizer and a weed killer and as a source of other nitrogen compounds. Next is calcium gluconate. Second word is G-L-U-C-O-N-A-T-E, noun from 1884. A white powdery salt, C-A-C-12-H-22-O-14, used especially to supplement bodily calcium stores. And then lastly, we have calcium hydroxide two words noun from circa 1889 a white crystalline strong alkali ca and then in parentheses we have oh and then there's two of those that is used especially to make mortar and plaster and to often oh to soften water so we had calcifuge calcify calcimine calcine calcinosis calcite calcitonin Calcium, calcium carbide, calcium carbonate, or carbonate, I don't know how to pronounce that one, calcium channel blocker, calcium chloride, calcium cyanamide, calcium gluconate, and calcium hydroxide. I honestly have no idea what to pick for the word of the episode. Uh, I mean, I kind of feel like calcium should be the word of the episode. Um, so I guess let's pick calcium as the word of the episode. And this is a terrible episode to start this on, but... Yesterday, I had a thought, and I think I'm just going to go with it, which is to sing a short little song about whatever the word is of the episode, whatever I pick as the word of the episode. And uh, so what is going to happen here? I don't know. Calcium, you, you're in food that we eat, and we need you in our body, and your silvery white divalent metallic element of the alcohol oh, this is terrible next one will be better i don't know nothing about calcium i don't know what to say i'm warming up i'm warming up all right
this is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary Podcast. This is my podcast, which is everything in the English language and some other language to, languages, too, that we have uh, taken over as our own words. All right, the first word, oh, I should say um, about half of these words are about calcium, and the other half are about, basically about uh, calculating th- stuff. So the first word is calcium hypochlorite. Two words, that second word is H-Y-P-O-C-H-L-O-R-I-T-E. Noun from 1869, a white powder, C-A-C-L-2-O-2, used especially as a bleaching agent and disinfectant. Next is calcium oxalate, O-X-A-L-A-T-E. Who knew that there were so many different forms of calcium? Uh, This is a noun from 1873, a crystalline salt, C-A-C-2-O-4, normally deposited in many plant cells and in animals, sometimes excreted in urine or retained in the form of urinary calculi. Calculi, is that going to be? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Uh, well, sort of. Um, yes. We, the, I, don't, I don't really know what my thought process is here, but we have seen so many of these that list the... Um, the 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 atom the list of atoms in this one it's C A O C two O four. If you had the ability, you could literally just grab one calcium atom and two carbon atoms and four oxygen atoms and put them together. But you know, we it's that's that's pretty hard for most of us to do. Maybe there are some scientists who can do stuff like that. I mean, they create it in some way, uh, but it's. I mean, that's that's all it is. It's that. Um, that's just one molecule of this stuff but you need a lot more than that. Um, but it's just, it's just uh, I just think it's funny that it's just written out there right like that, that you can just, it's just these things. It's these five, five atoms. I don't know what I'm talking about. Next is calcium oxide, noun from 1869. A caustic solid, C-A-O, it's just two atoms, one C-A and one O, that is white when pure, and that is the chief constituent of lime. Is it the lime food, the fruit, or is it the lime that's like the rock, the the um, the molecule, the no, nah, that's not it, the uh, the substance, or is it similar or different? I don't know. I don't know. Next is calcium phosphate, noun from 1869. Any of various phosphates of calcium as a the phosphate CaH4. P2O8, used as a fertilizer and in baking powder. Also as in B, the phosphate, C-A-H-P-O4, used in pharmaceutical preparations and animal feeds. Uh, Okay, and then C, there's also a D, but C, the phosphate, C-A-3-P2O8, used as a fertilizer. And D, the naturally occurring phosphate, CA5, oh boy, this is getting complicated. Um, in parentheses, we have F, C, L, O, H, a half of a carbon, and O3. And then in another set of parentheses, we have P, O4, and then there's three of that. There's three this of this P, O4. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, and how is there a half of a carbon? I don't understand that one. Or a half of a, a C, O3? It broke it in half, but there's three of O's. I don't know. Okay, let's start this over. The naturally occurring phosphate, blah, 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 that contains other elements or radicals and is the chief constituent of phosphate rock, bones, and teeth. Well, that seems pretty important. Uh, all right, next we have calcium silicate or silicate. It's probably silicate. Noun from 1869. Any of several silicates of calcium used especially in construction materials as Portland cement. How is that different from other cements? Which Portland is that? Is it Does it come from the Portland on the West Coast or the Portland on the East Coast? Is there Miami cement? Next is calcium sulfate, noun from 1869, a white salt, C-A-S-O-4, that occurs especially as anhydrite, gypsum, and plaster of Paris, and that is hydrated f- and 
and that in hydrated form is used as a building material and in anhydrous form is used as a drying agent. Scientists are smart. How do they figure this stuff out? How do they, how do they understand any of this? I sure don't. Uh, we need more scientists in the world and more people to believe that it is real. All right, we are done with the calcium words. I don't think they're going to come back. Next is calculable. Adjective from circa 1734. One, subject to or ascertainable by calculation. Two, that may be counted on. Synonym is dependable. Calculable. Okay, I guess you could say that. Uh, this is the, the number one is what we see more commonly. Uh, it is able to be done by calculation, so it is calcul calculable. Next, we have calculate. Verb from 1570. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here. We are starting with transitive. 1A, to determine by mathematical processes, as in calculate the rate of acceleration. 1B, to reckon by exercise of practical judgment. Synonym is estimate, as in calculate the likelihood of success. 1C, to solve or probe the meaning of. Synonym is figure out. It's kind of an odd synonym, but, you know, it's those are words that you, you say, you put, to put them together. As in, trying to calculate his expression. That is a quote from Hugh McLennan, M-A-C-L-E-N-N-A-N. -N -N. Hugh McLennan said, trying to calculate his expression. Uh, okay, number two, to design or adapt for a purpose. As in, he carefully calculated the timing of his arrival for maximum impact. What a weird definition example here. He carefully calculated this timing of his. I mean, I I don't know. That seems super strange to me. You could you could make something less complicated or something. Uh, okay, three a, to judge to be true or probable. To be synonym is intend, as in I calculate to do it or. Uh, or perish in the attempt. I calculate to do it or perish in the attempt. And that is a quote from Mark Twain. And now we have intransitive 1A, to make a calculation. 1B, to forecast consequences. And two synonyms are count and rely. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from the Latin calculatus which is from calculare, which is from calculus, which means pebble. Pebble? Okay. Uh, it says used in reckoning. Don't know what that means. Um, and then it's uh, related to lime and chalk. Next is calculated. I don't know why it's related to lime and chalk, though. Oh, because maybe it's pebbles made out of lime? But then how did that become like counting and calculating? You had to count the pebbles, maybe? I don't know. Uh, next is calculated, adjective from 1722. One, synonyms are apt and likely. 2A, worked out by mathematical calculation. 2B, engaged in, undertaken, or displayed after reckoning or estimating the statistical probability of success or failure, as in a calculated risk. 3A, planned or contrived to accomplish a purpose. 3B, synonyms are deliberate and intended, as in a calculated attempt to deceive voters. Uh, yep, that, yep, 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 yep. Uh, calculatedly is an adverb and calculatedness is a noun. Uh, next is calculating, with an I-N-G, adjective from 1710, one, making calculations, as in Calculating machine. Calculating machine. That's it. It makes calculations. Uh, number two, marked by prudent analysis or by shrewd consideration of self-interest. And a synonym is scheming. Calculatingly is an adverb. Next is calculation. Noun from the 14th century. 1A, the process or an act of calculating. 1B, the result of an act of calculating. 2A, studied care in analyzing or planning to be cold heartless planning to promote self-interest 
And calculational is an adjective. Next we have calculator. This is a noun from the 14th century, one that calculates as a, a usually electronic device for performing mathematical calculations, and b, a person who operates a calculator. Uh, yeah, I would also say that uh, the, the probably the original definition was a person who calculates. They didn't have a calculator back in the day. They were literally the, the person who was doing the calculations, and so they were called the calculator. Uh, and then when they had the ability to turn it into an electronic device, that became the calculator. It's the same story for computers. Uh, we think of computer as a machine, but back in the day, uh, we, if you saw the movie Hidden Figures, you probably learned this, uh, th before they, we had computers, there were people who were computing things. They were computing information and numbers, and so they were a computer. I think that's so cool. Uh, okay, and then the last word is calculus, C-A-L-C-U-L-O-U-S, adjective from 1605, caused or characterized by a calculus, spelled uh, slightly differently, or calculi. Uh, and so actually our next word in the, f the, the first word in the next episode is actually this word, C-A-L-C-U-L-U-S. Uh, but the one that we just read was an L-O-U-S. So it's caused or characterized by this other thing that we're going to read about later. So we had calcium hypochlorite, calcium oxalate, calcium oxide, calcium phosphate, calcium silicate, calcium sulfate, calculable, calculate, calculated, calculating, calculation, calculator, and calculus. Uh, I think I'm going to pick calculator as the word of the episode. And... If I... No, we're just going to do it. I'm just going to sing a little song about the calculator. The calculators are great. They used to be people, but now they're electronic. This song doesn't rhyme. It doesn't have a melody. It barely has any notes whatsoever. Calculators. It's on my phone. It's on my computer. A computer used to be a person. A calculator used to be a person. All right, I think I'm good with that. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Hey, guess what? Yesterday was Christmas. I forgot to say that. I was so distracted by all these calcium words. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I hope you had a good Christmas if you celebrated that. Um, and today is December 26th, and I believe this is the first day of Kwanzaa, which goes, uh, it ends on J uh, January 1st. Uh, so happy Kwanzaa. Do you say happy Kwanzaa, merry Kwanzaa, good Kwanzaa? What do you say? I think it's probably happy Kwanzaa, but I'm not sure. I should probably learn these things. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it is the holiday season. Uh, you know, that's that's a thing that's happening right now. But it's almost New Year's, uh, New Year's time, the, the time of the year that we have randomly decided that, you know, the next year starts. Doesn't really matter. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, speaking of that, uh, we're, we're going to get to some, some, something related to that later this episode. Also, I never said my songs are going to be good. Well, you know, as I do this, you know, it's a muscle. Maybe I'll get a little bit better, but, but so far we're 0 for 2, I think. Okay. The first word for this episode is calculus, C-A-L-C-U-L-U-S. And this is a noun from 1666. 1A, a method of computation or calculation in a special notation as of logic or symbol logic. Uh, 1B, the mathematical methods comprising differential and integral calculus. And this is often used with the word the, the calculus. Number two, synonym is calculation. 3A, a concretion a concretion usually of mineral salts around organic material found especially in hollow organs or ducts. D-U-C-T-S. 3B. We have the number two definition for the first form of tartar. T-A-R-T-A-R. Tartar. And number four. A system of arrangement or arrangement of intricate or interrelated parts. 
let's see. This is from the Latin word, or it is a Latin word that means stone, and it is used in reckoning. I, again, this is the second time I've seen that. I don't know what that means. I never took calculus in school. Uh, let's see. I guess I technically could have taken it my senior year of high school, uh, but it sounded scary, and I didn't. I didn't want to do that. I. I was. I didn't think I was smart enough to do that. Um, I, I don't know. It seems like it could be sort of interesting, but I've heard a lot of horror stories that people are like, uh, calculus sucks. But I don't know. You won't know until you actually try it. So maybe I should try calculus. Maybe I'll learn that in my free time. Next, we have calculus of variations from 1837. It doesn't say what it is. It's just from 1837. A branch of mathematics concerned with applying the methods of calculus to finding the maxima and minima of a function which depends for its values on another function or a curve. Yep, all you math and science people probably know what that is. Next is caldera. Could also be pronounced caldera or caldera. C-A-L-D-E-R-A. Noun from 1691. A volcanic crater that has a diameter many times that of the vent and is formed by collapse of the central part of a volcano or by explosions of extraordinary violence. Uh, this is a Spanish word, literally means cauldron, uh, which in this case is spelled C-A-L-D-R-O-N, which is actually our next word. Um, but in, in, And then there's more at the word cauldron, C-A-U-L-D-R-O-N. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a big crater usually... Uh, you know, th I think this is what we typically think of that is at the top of volcanoes, uh, but that is not necessarily always true. Uh, they don't always have this caldera. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so next we have that word cauldron, C-A-L-D-R-O-N. It's just a variation of a cauldron with the U, which it w it'll be a little while before we see that. Next is kalesh or kalash. C-A-L-E-C-H-E. -E. You can have an accent over that first E or not. It's up to you how you want to spell it. This is a noun from 1666. 1A. We have the 1A definition for the word kalash with a C-A-L, which uh, I'm sure we read. We must have read that one probably not that long ago. Uh, here we go. It is, um, oh, it's a, it's a carriage. It's a carriage. That's what that one is. Okay, next is, uh, now that was 1A. Now we have 1B, a two-wheeled horse-drawn vehicle with a driver's seat on the splashboard used in Quebec. That is, I, I would normally say Quebec, but I think it's officially pronounced Quebec. And then number two, the number two definition for the word calash with a C-A-L-A-S, C-H, S-H, wow, okay, uh, why did this, why is it a new spelling, I don't know, it's the French form of it, next we have califactory, C-A-L-E, and then the word factory, but it's all one word, noun from circa 1681, a monastery room warmed and used as a sitting room, the califactory, um, so this is from the Latin word Calafacere, which means to warm. And then there's more at the word chafe, C-H-A-F-E. Uh, so it sounds like it's just a, a warmed room in a monastery that you can sit in. Yep, the califactory. Next is the word calendar. First form, um, if I assume it's a noun. There it is. It's a noun from the 13th century. One, a system for fixing the beginning of length and divisions of the civil year and arranging days and longer divisions of time as weeks and months in a definite order. Uh, yeah, I guess if I had to put a definition to what a calendar is, that's what you would say, but I would have never come up with that. I'd be like, it's the thing that shows the days and months of the year. Uh, and then it says to see the month table. Uh, okay, number two. A tabular register of days according to a system usually covering one year and referring the days of each month to the days of the week. Three, 
an orderly list as 3A, a list of cases to be tried in court. 3B, a list of bills or other items reported out of committee for consideration by a legislative assembly. 3C, a list or schedule of planned events or activities giving dates and details. And then number four is British, a university catalog. And let's look at this etymology. Uh, let's see, it is, uh, is from the Latin uh, money lenders account book. Uh, that's what that is, and uh, that is good. Um, I, I've probably mentioned this before because I've been doing this for a couple of years now. Um, but there, I don't know how serious there this is, but there has been talk about changing the calendar that we are used to and uh, making every month have only four weeks exactly, so 28 days for each month, and then there would be have to be a 13th month, and then there would be one single day left over that would we would basically be a free day. Uh, and then on leap years, uh, there would be an extra free day. Uh, you know, this obviously comes with a lot of problems, like your birthday wouldn't be your birthday anymore, and then what do you call that 13th uh, month and all these sorts of things. Um, but I also see some some positives, some pros with changing to this calendar. Um, everything is regular. Everything is consistent. Um, every day of each month comes on the same day of the week. You know, I don't know. I see it. Also, you'd have to get every single uh, country on the world in the world to change over to this at the exact same time and to be on board with it. So that comes with a whole other set of problems. It's a logistical nightmare, but I think it's kind of a cool idea. All right. Next is the second form of calendar. Uh, this is a transitive verb from the 15th century to enter in a calendar. Next is calendar year. Two words. Noun from circa 1909. One, a period of a year beginning and ending with the dates that are conventionally accepted as marking the beginning and end of a numbered year. Yeah, like I said, this is uh, appropriate. We're at the pretty much at the end of the year. We only have a few days left to go. Uh, so yeah, that's it's just a coincidence. Uh, number two, a period of time equal in length to that of the year in the calendar conventionally in use. Next is... Okay, so it's calendar again, but it is spelled uh, with an E-R at the end. The other one was an A-R. So this is the first form of calendar, I'll say, calendar, uh, even though they are pronounced the same way. This is a verb, looks like it's just transitive, from 1513, to press as cloth, rubber, or paper, between rollers or plates in order to smooth and glaze or to thin into sheets. I have not heard of this. So, uh, so I, I imagine um, the old school uh, washing machines that you would use, uh, and then it had those two, uh, two. I guess they were well cylinders. I see this word cylinder here, which we'll get to in a second. But I saw those, and then you can, you know, you put the clothes through there, and you squeeze them, and it dries them out. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing that that is the act of calendaring. Uh, this is from Middle French, calendre, calendre, from calendre, which is a machine for calendaring, uh, which is from uh, the vulgar Latin colendra, which means cylinder, uh, modified from the Greek kilindros, and there's more at the word cylinder. So that must be what that is. They probably, but they use it for other things, like um, I think pasta makers, uh, they, those also have a similar uh, structure to them, those cylinders, and you can flatten things out. Uh, yeah, I think that's what that is. Calendar. Second form of calendar is a noun from 1688. A machine for calendaring something. Third form of calendar, noun from 1621. A member of a sulfic, yeah, uh, no, sufic, sufic order of wandering medicant dervishes. Lots of word a lot of us probably don't know. Uh, but this is from a Persian word, calendar, Q-A-L-A-N-D-A-R. Next is calendrical, also just calendric. Adjective from circa 1843 of relating to, characteristic of, or used in a calendar, uh, calend calendar, D-A-R, uh, you know, the thing with the dates. And then our last word is calends or calends, C-A-L-E-N-D-S. 
You could also spell it with a K. Uh, this is a noun from the 14th century, the first day of the ancient Roman month from which days were counted backward to the Ides. The Ides is the 15th of the month uh, back in you know old Roman Latin days. Uh, so this is interesting because, well, let's look at the etymology first. Uh, well, it does not, that's not helpful. Um, but w w what I'm guessing is um, it seems like maybe we get the word calendar from this word. Possibly, maybe. Um, but, you know, when we look at the word calendar, it doesn't say that it is from this. It says it's from other forms of this word calendar. Middle English, Middle, uh, middle Latin, Anglo-French, uh, Middle Latin, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I don't know. There's probably some connection here with this word, calends. Uh, so we had calculus, calculus of variations, caldera, cauldron, kalesh, calefactory. Uh, that's the warming room, calendar, calendar year, calendar, calendrical, and calends. I will pick caldera as the word of the episode. Uh, oh, man. I think if I get if I get good at this whole song thing, uh, it would be cool to get one of those looping machines. Uh, you know, the people, the first people that come to mind are um, Flula Borg. If you don't know who Flula Borg is, you should go look him up. Um, also, Reggie Watts. Uh, you probably know who he is. Um, also, there's this guy. I think his name is Mark. Mark. Uh, sort of like a French last name, Rebier, Something. Oh, I'm blanking on his last name. Um, but they all are super talented. Um, there's tons of people who do this, but those are the first three that I can think of. And they have these. They have keyboards and they have these machines and you can uh, and the microphones and you can make a sound. You can play it on the keyboard and you, it'll loop and then you can add layers to your song. Uh, so maybe someday I will get that complicated with this. But in the meantime, we don't have that. So we're going to sing a song about a caldera. The caldera. All my songs start the same way. Let's do something different. Volcanoes are things... Oh, boy. This is a, such a bad, bad, bad idea. Um, caldera, caldera. The ashes come out of the caldera. There's also some lava. There's also some lava. Caldera, caldera. You are a crater. All right. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Who? yay. Let's do this. Uh, okay. So the first word is... Um, calendula, C-A-L-E-N-D-U-L-A. -E we are at the, uh, the last section of page 174. This calendula is a noun from 1789. Any of a small genus of yellow rayed composite herbs of temperate regions. And the scientific name is just calendula. It's just the same name. Not very clever or creative. This is from the Latin word calendai, which means calends, uh, which, uh, oh, that was the end of the last episode. It's been a week since I recorded, so I have no idea what just happened uh, in terms of episodes. Uh, oh, that is the first day of the ancient Roman month. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, th why would they name it after that? I don't know. Moving on to calenture, C-A-L-E-N-T-U-R-E, -E, noun from 1582. A fever formerly supposed to affect sailors in the tropics. Calenture. This is from the Spanish word calentura, which is from calentar, which means to heat. And that is from uh, the Latin verb calere, which means to be warm. And there's more at the word, well, this doesn't make any sense. The word le, L-E-E, -E. no clue why. Um, I mean, I guess there's an L-E in the word, but that's that's sort of a stretch. All right, next is calf, C-A-L-F. You don't pronounce the L. Uh, it, it does look like people say calf or cough or kaif. Who says kaif for this word? Okay, this is the first form noun from before the 12th century, 1A. The young of the domestic cow, also that of a closely related mammal, as a bison. Yes, young young bisons are calves as well. Yeah, I think they use that for whales and 
uh, probably doll, any mammal, really, most of them. I mean, we don't call our kids calves. That would be odd. Maybe we should start doing that. Instead of a toddler, they're a calf. Okay, 1B, the young of various large animals as the elephant or whale. Yeah, see, there you go. Baby elephant is a calf, same as a whale. But I guess humans are not large enough to be called calves. Two is plural, the hide of the domestic calf, especially the synonym calf skin. Number three, an awkward or silly youth. Yeah, would have been probably me. Uh, Calf-like is, uh, it says it's a dialect, it's an adjective. Um, In calf uh, is a sort of a phrase that is a synonym, or the synonym for that is pregnant, in calf, uh, and that is used of a cow. So if you say a cow is in calf, you can, they're pregnant. I don't know why you would just not call them pregnant, but okay. Second, oh, let's look at the etymology Anything interesting here? Not particularly. Number two is a a second form of calf. This is a noun from the 14th century. The fleshy back part of the leg below the knee. The fleshy back part of the... Below the... So, uh, oh yeah, that's your calf. Why am I blanking? Um, Yeah, and why... What's the the connection between these two words? Um, Is there a, a word that connects them... There's not, the only etymology for this second form is from Old Norse, Kaffi, K-A-L-F-I, but is that in this other one? No, it's not, so maybe it's just a coincidence that they're the same word. Next is calf love. There's uh, two words with a hyphen, noun from 1823, and the synonym is just puppy love. I don't know why it's calf love, because those are cows or other things like that. Uh, Next is calf's foot jelly. Um, I made sure not to read the the definition when I read the words beforehand, before I recorded, uh, but I am super curious about this one. It is calf's, it uh, has an apostrophe s hyphen foot, so calf's foot, and then the next word is jelly. It doesn't sound good. Noun from 1775, jelly, oh yeah, jelly made from gelatin obtained by boiling calf's feet. Yeah, if you didn't know, gelatin is from hooves and bones of animals and stuff. So anything that has gelatin, uh, you're, you're eating animals. Most of you are probably fine with that. But vegetarians, you, you can't even have those. Like jelly beans and marshmallows. Yeah, gelatin is in marshmallows. On that note, let's move on to calf skin. Uh, this is a noun from the 15th century. Leather made of the skin of a calf. Why? Next is Caliban, capital C A L I B A N, noun from circa 1612, a savage and deformed slave in Shakespeare's The Tempest. I think it's interesting that characters in plays or stories have, um, I guess, they've become popular enough that they've gotten into our English language that i mean i not that i hear this word caliban um but i guess it's it's common enough that it's in the dictionary and it's just a character in a story next is caliber spelled c-a-c-a-l-i-b-e-r or b-r-e this is a noun from 1567 1a degree of mental capacity or moral quality 1b degree of excellence or importance 2a the diameter of a bullet or other projectile the diameter yeah so when they're talking about the caliber of a bullet it's uh it's the diameter the 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 width of the shortest length what did that make that i guess so um the shortest length is the width and that's okay okay 2b the diameter of a bore of a gun usually expressed in hundredths or thousandths of an inch, and typically written as a decimal fraction, as in uh, 32 caliber, 0.32 caliber. I also thought, and I've mentioned this before, I also thought it was in millimeters, but uh, this is expressed in hundredths or thousandths of an inch. I don't think that makes much sense. I think, I think most of the world uses the metric system, so that's what we should use. Three, the diameter of a round or cylindrical body, especially the internal diameter of a hollow cylinder. Okay, this is from Italian, old Italian, calibro, from Arabic, 
Kalib, which is a shoemaker's last. Shoemaker's last? Last what? His last shoe? His last what? Shoe, shoemaker's last. Okay. Next is calibrate. Verb from circa 1864. Uh, we are starting with transitive, and I think that's all it is. One, to ascertain the caliber of as a thermometer tube. Two, to determine, rectify, or mark the graduations of as a thermometer tube. Three, to standardize, uh, to standardize by determining the deviation from a standard so as to ascertain the proper correction factors. And the example is as a measuring instrument. Four, to adjust precisely for a particular function. Five, to measure precisely, especially to measure against a standard. Calibrator is a noun. That is the person who is doing the calibrating, or it could also be the machine that you are using to calibrate something. Next is calibration. Noun, calibrate good. No, that, that would have been good for the last one. Calibration, calibrate tonight. No, I don't know the words. Uh, calibration is a noun from circa 1859. One, the act or process of calibrating. The state of being calibrated. Two, a set of graduations to indicate values or positions. And that is usually used in plural, as in calibrations on a gauge. Graduations, those would be like probably little lines that uh, are indicating uh, you know, uh, this is one milliliter and this is two milliliters or whatever, 10, 20, whatever it is. Um, and I think it's interesting that it's the same word as when you finish like eighth grade or senior year of high school, you graduate. Um, and so, yeah, that word just means like probably the indication of a, the next level or, uh, you know, the end of one and the beginning of another. I don't know. We'll find out in the G's. Next is Kalishi. C-A-L-I-C-H-E, Kalishi. It is not Kalisi from Game of Thrones. This is something different, I assume. This is a noun from circa 1858. One, the nitrate-bearing gravel or rock of the sodium nitrate deposits of Chile and Peru. Two, a crust of calcium carbonate that forms on the stony soil of arid regions. Kalishi. This is um, American Spanish from Spanish, which means flake of lime, from cal, which means lime, from Latin calx, and there's more at the word chalk, very similar to all those calcium words we read a few episodes ago. Next is calico, noun from 1578, 1A, cotton cloth imported from India, 1B is British, a plain white cotton fabric that is heavier than muslin. 1C, any of various cheap cotton fabrics with figured patterns. 2, a blotched or spotted animal, especially one that is predominantly white with red and black patches. Calico is also an adjective. I have a calico cat. Uh, I didn't know this, uh, not not beforehand, but I learned it uh, after I got the cat, that most calico cats are female. And I, I don't know why it has to do with genetics, uh, but I guess the vast majority of the time you see a calico cat, it will be female. Um, yeah, so it's basically, you know, just th th this pattern. Um, I wouldn't say that her splotches are red, more orange. Uh, she's mostly black and has some orange and white patches. Maybe I'll post a picture of her. Bailey. That's Bailey. Uh, I, maybe I have posted a picture of her, but I'll post another one. Uh, and this is from Calicut, India. Uh, okay, next is Calico Bass. Two words, noun from circa 1882. Synonym is black crappy. It's a, the crappiest fish. Next is Calico Bush. Two words, noun from 1814. Synonym is mountain laurel. Uh, it's probably some kind of bush. And then our last word is an abbreviation. It is CALIF, capital C-A-L-I-F. It is an abbreviation for California. So we had calendula, calentur, calentur ca calf, calf's, oh boy, I'm messing this up, calf love, calf's foot jelly, calf skin, caliban, caliber, calibrate, calibration, calici, uh, calico, calico bass, calico bush, I wonder if the bass and the bush have that sort of blotched 
a spotted pattern on them. Uh, and then Caliph. Well, I'm going to pick Calico as the word of the episode uh, because I have a Calico cat, so why not? Um, we So in terms of my song, um, I am actually going to sing a portion of a very stupid song that my wife and I made up. Um, let's see. I'll give you a short backstory. Uh, my cat Bailey is incredibly soft, especially her, her underbelly. It is the softest on a cat I have ever felt. I swear, maybe if there was a Guinness World Records for softest cat in the world, I she would win, probably. Anyway, so I think it was mostly my wife made up the song, and I will sing a portion of it to you. Bailey, the softest cat in the world, makes other cats feel like squirrels. That's all I'm going to sing. But there is more. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is my podcast and everything is in it. And um, uh, rate and review and subscribe and share, please. And thank you. Join my Patreon if you so wish. Um, You'll get episodes very early. Uh, What else do I got to say? Please tell everybody about it. Uh, Yes. Okay. Let's just talk about the words. That's what you're here for. First word is California condor. First word is capitalized. Second word is not capitalized. This is a noun from 1855. There's going to be a bunch of California... Well, just a, just a handful of California words. A large, nearly extinct vulture found most recently in the mountains of Southern uh, California that is related to the condor of South America. We will post a picture. Maybe we'll even compare it to the South American condor. The scientific name is... Uh, Gymnopgyps, Gymnopgyps? I don't know how to say that. Gymnopgyps californianus. Um, yeah, that is that. And it is from California, which is a state of the U.S. Next is California laurel, noun from 1868. An evergreen Pacific coast tree of the laurel family with small umbilate le- uh, flowers. Umbilate. Uh, U-M-B-E-L-L-A-T-E. Umbelate? Umbelate flowers. I'm going to guess that those look sort of like umbrellas, uh, but that's that's kind of a stretch. Um, and then the scientific name is Umbellaria californica. Ooh, there might be a sneeze. Next is California poppy. <coughs> Told ya. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've talked about my allergies before. I take an allergy pill every day, which seems to help, but sometimes things just happen. Next is California poppy, noun from 1874, any of a genus of herbs of the poppy family, especially one widely cultivated for its usually yellow or orange flowers. The genus name is Eschols... S... S... Why is there an S-C-H twice? Eschulzia. I'm going to say that's correct. Eschulzia. And the one that was mentioned is Esolgia californica, and that's probably the one that we're talking about. Uh, Next is California sea lion, noun from 1873. A small brown sea lion that occurs especially, it occurs, occurs especially along the Pacific coast of North America from Vancouver Island to Baja, California. That's the, that's the whole coast of California, plus more. I assume Vancouver Island is up in the north, um, and the Gulf of California, and in the Galapagos Islands, and that is the seal most often trained to perform in circuses. And the scientific name is Zalophus, Zalophus californianus. Yeah, okay. Next is Californio. It's, um, it's got a capital C. It's Californio. Noun from 1923, one of the original Spanish colonists of California or their descendants. Uh, this is from the Spanish word, uh, which is from California. So the the original people who settled in that area were called Californios. Next is Californium. There's no capital C on this one. This is a noun from 1950 a radioactive element discovered by bombarding curium-242 with alpha particles. And then it says to see the element table. So which element is it? I don't know. But it's Californium. Uh, Okay, 
Next is Caliginous, C-A-L-I-G-I-N-O-U-S, adjective from 1548. Synonyms are misty and dark. It's caliginous, as in a caliginous atmosphere. Um, it's from Middle French caligino. Um, basically, it's from the uh, Latin word that means darkness, cal- caligo. Next is caliper, first form, noun from 1588. Uh, 1A, any of various measuring instruments having two usually adjustable arms, legs, or jaws, used especially to measure diameter or thickness, used usually in plural, as in a pair of calipers. 1B, a device for pressing a frictional material against the sides of a rotating wheel or disc, Uh, and the frictional material, an example, is a brake pad. Next, uh, no, number two, thickness, especially of paper, cardboard, or a tree. The, The caliper of that paper is... Five millimeters. That would be an incredibly thick piece of paper. Uh, This is just an alternative of caliber with a B. And then we have an example, a picture of the 1A, which is those uh, the very uh, measuring instruments. There's two of them. One of them, there's a point where these two arms connect and they can rotate from and then the arms come out and they're curved and they come to a semi point at the end um, towards each other. And then the other one, It's more straight arms that are coming out from the one point, and then they go straight out, but then they curve away from each other a little bit. Uh, So those are probably measured. uh, The second one is probably used to measure the the inside width of something, and then the other one is used to measure the outside width of something, if that makes any sense to you. Next is the second form of caliper, verb from 1876, transitive. To measure by or as if by calipers. Next is calif, C-A-L-I-P-H, or you could uh, spell it with an F instead of a P-H. Noun from the 14th century. A successor of Muhammad as temporal and spiritual head of Islam. And that it, this is used as a title. Caliphal, uh, you'd probably just pronounce it caliphal, is an adjective. And I actually, um, there's another pronunciation It could be caliph. So there's caliph and uh, caliph. I think both are good. Uh, And then this is from the Arabic word khalifa, which means successor. Next is uh, caliphate, caliphate, or just caliphate, uh, with a ph, noun from 1614, the office or dominion of a caliph. I'm going to say caliph because that's the first pronunciation. So the caliph works in a uh, calif- cal- caliphate. I think that would be cor- correct. A caliphate. Next is calisthenic. C A L I S T H E N I C. Calisthenic. Adjective from 1827 of or relating to calisthenics, which is our next word. This is a noun from 1827. One systematic rhythmic bodily exercises performed usually without apparatus. Number two uh, is usually singular, the art or practice of calisthenics. This is from the Greek word kalos, which means beautiful, plus the word sthenos. Yeah, it's S-T-H, sthenos, and that means strength. So it's beautiful strength, or maybe it's getting stronger, but you're, um, you're doing it in a beautiful fashion. You're moving around rhythmically with your body. This is not something I feel like that people do much anymore. Um, But back in the day when this was very popular, I think in the 50s, this was pretty popular. Um, I mean, it's from 1827, so it's been happening since then. But, um, you know, I think it's I think there's some some benefits to this. Just just get your body moving. Get the blood flowing. Yeah. Sorry for the sniffles. Uh, Next is calyx or just calyx. C-A-L-I-X, noun from 1698. Synonym is cup. Just, yeah, C-U-P. This is from the Latin word calic or calyx, and there's more at the word chalice. We'll get to that later. That chalice is a cup. Next is caulk, spelled C-A-L-K. This is the first form, 
This one is a variation of the word caulk, spelled C-A-U-L-K. So the second form can be spelled both ways. Noun from 1587. A cleat on the shoe of a horse to prevent slipping. Also, a similar device worn on the sole of a shoe. They call that a caulk. Okay. Um, Yeah. I've seen the horseshoes. Um, I guess I'll have to look more closely to see that if there's a, a another piece that comes off, uh, and we then you call that a cock. This is probably an alternative of cockin, which is from the Middle English cacun, c a c u n, from Middle Dutch or Middle French dialect, Middle Dutch uh, kalkoen, which means horse's hoof. Uh, from the Walloon word kalkain, which means heel. I learned that Walloon is a language in uh, France, Belgium area. Uh, so calcane means heel from Latin calcanium uh, from calx, which means heel. So it's, uh, it's, it's a foot stuff. All right. And then the last word is the same word. It is the third form of cock or cock. Uh, transitive verb from 1624. One, to furnish with cocks. Uh, which would that be? The, I don't know. Uh, and then number two, to wound to wound with a cock. Now, but is this talking about the the horses, the cleat on the shoe, the horse's shoe, or the other shoe? Um, I guess so. I don't know. That's interesting. I guess if you furnish with cocks, that means you're putting them on your shoe. Maybe. All right. So we had California condor, California laurel, California poppy, California sea lion, Californio, Californium, Caliginous, Caliper, Caliph or Caliph. Caliphate, calisthenic, calisthenics, calyx, cock, 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 cock. Okay, well, I think I'm going to pick calisthenics as the word of the episode because um, it's just good to get your body moving. But We don't do that enough. I think if you've been sitting around for a half hour or an hour just doing some work, just get up and do some calisthenics. Maybe I'll do that today. So how are we going to do this song thing? Um, I feel uh, rather silly and embarrassed about this whole thing because usually when I'm making up stupid songs in my free time uh it's uh it's just off the cuff and it's inspired and it's usually of of a word or fra- a few words or a phrase uh that there for some reason there's a song that comes to head to, to my mind so forcing myself to do this is very strange um and uh yeah I don't know let's see what happens when you're sitting on your desk and you need some movement, get up and do some calisthenics. Calisthenics are the thing to do. You got to get your body moving. Get the blood flowing, flowing, flowing. Get the blood flowing and you'll feel great. All right. Well, that wasn't terrible, I guess. I mean, it wasn't good, but it wasn't the worst. That's all I'm going to say today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Oh, this is going to be a f- an interesting episode um interesting as in probably incredibly uninteresting and boring because hey guess what we have one word in this episode uh yeah one word um and it's just this giant block of text and it goes a good chunk over to the next column so this might be a bit on the long side although i'm probably not going to have so much chitter chatter uh we'll see we'll we'll see what happens um okay so the word is call c-a-l-l it is the first form, uh, and the second form will be in the next episode. It's not nearly as long, but it's also pretty pretty long. Um, okay, call is a verb from before the 12th century. We are starting with intransitive, and this is so giant, I assume transitive is somewhere. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, actually, it's a lot. Transitive is much longer than intransitive. Uh, okay, 1A, to speak in a loud, distinct voice so as to be heard at a distance. Synonym is shout, as in, call for help, call for help, call for help. 1B, to make a request or demand, as in, call for an investigation. Uh, 1C is talking about an animal, to utter a characteristic note or cry. Yeah, the animals call, that's what they do. They call for lots of different reasons. They call because they're like, hey dudes, what's up, let's hang out. They also call, they say... Hey, uh, ladies or men's, I would like to have some relations with you. Or they also call to say, 
uh, hey guys, there's food over here. Let's go get it. Or they call to say, hey, there's a guy who wants to eat us. Run, run, run. I think that's most of the calls. Okay, 1D. To get, to try, to get. Really? To get, to try. No, sorry. To get or try to get into communication by telephone. To get or try to get into communication by telephone. Who does this anymore? As in, just call to say hello. I just call to say I love you. Um, And that is often used with the word up. Call you up. 1E, to make a demand in card games, as for a particular card or for a show of hands, and that's the end of that sentence, to make demand, to make a demand in card games. 1F, to give the calls for a square dance. Um, how does that go? How do the square dance songs go? Uh, boy, I am blanking. I haven't square danced probably since high school. Not that I was super into it at the time. Because they made you do it in gym class. Grab your partner to and fro. And I don't know how to finish that line. Number two, to make a brief visit. As in, called to pay his respects. Also as in, called on a friend. Well, those were all the intransitive definitions. Now we go to transitive. 1A1, to utter in a loud, distinct voice. And this is often used with the word out. As in, call out a number. Uh, like in bingo? B7. 1A2. To announce or read loudly or authoritatively, as in call the roll. Also as in call off a row of figures. Call off a... What are with these examples? They're so weird. Okay. 1-3. To announce the play-by-play of as a football game. 1B1. To command or request to come or be present, as in was called to testify. 1b2 to cause to come what to cause to come that's the end of that one uh and then see with these large blocks of text i think i should put my finger up here so i can follow along um it's very hard when you go to the sec to the next line it's hard to find where where it is um okay so 1b2 is to cause to come synonym is bring as in calls to mind an old saying 1b no what are we on? 1B, no, 1C. Wow. This is going to get real hard. 1C, to summon to a particular activity, employment, or office, as in was called to active duty. Also as in was called to the bar of justice. 1D, to invite or command to meet. Synonym is convoke. C-O-N-V-O-K-E, yeah. As in call a meeting. 1E, to rouse from sleep or summon to get up. Uh, 1F1, to give the order for, bring into action, as in call a strike against the company. Well, yes, if you are not being treated well, you should strike. Also, as in call a pitch out. What's a pitch out? Next is 1F2, to manage by giving the signals or orders. That, uh, as in, that catcher calls a good game. 1G1. Are we still in the ones for transitive? I think so. Uh, 1G1. To make a demand in bridge for a, a card or suit. So, you're yes, you're calling a card or a suit. 1G2. To require a player to show the hand in poker by making an equal bet. I don't know a whole lot about poker, but I do know that. Um, okay, 1G3, to challenge, to make good on a statement. Uh, I would like, I'm going to call you out on that, maybe. Uh, 1G4, wow, 1G4, to charge with or censure for an offense or an offense, as in, deserves to be called on that. 1H, to attract, as game, by imitating the characteristic cry. Like a, a goose call, a duck call, you're imitating it. <laughs> Okay, next is 1I, to halt, as a baseball game, because of unsuitable conditions. Yeah, if it's storming, raining, you're going to call the game. 1J, to rule on the status of, as a pitched ball or a player's action, as in, call balls and strikes. 
to rule on the status of. Yeah, so when they pitch it, you give the umpire calls a ball or calls a strike or calls a foul. I guess they don't call fouls. Also is in, uh, call a base runner safe. 1K to give the calls for a square dance. And that is often used with the word off. Call off. Why is my closet door opening on its own? That was weird. Um, okay, next is 1L1. To demand payment of, especially by formal notice, as in call a loan. 1L2. To demand presentation of, as a bond or option, for redemption. To demand a presentation of or rede- for redemption. 1M1. Man, yeah, we are still in the ones. 1M1. To get or try to get in communication with by telephone, as in call the doctor to make an appointment. I actually need to call the dentist to make an appointment. My dentist appointment got canceled when this pandemic happened, and I still haven't rescheduled it. 1M2. To generate signals for a telephone number in order to reach the party to whom the number is assigned. (laughs) It's such a silly way to say that. Uh, Okay, Uh, as in, call 911. Uh, 1M3, to make a signal to in order to transmit a message, as in, call the flagship. 2, we're we're on the 2s. 2A, to speak of or address by a specified name. Also, give a name to, as in, call her Kitty. That's the, the capital K. It's a name, a kitty. Uh, are you calling a cat kitty? Are you calling a person kitty? I don't know. To be one. To regard or characterize as of a certain kind. Synonym is consider. As in, can hardly be called generous. Well, maybe you should change that. N- to be two. To estimate or consider for purposes of an estimate or for convenience. As in, Call it an even dollar. So if you're if they're if uh you're being charged a dollar and one cent, the person might say, ah, eh, just call it an even dollar. Just give me a dollar. I don't care about that one cent. Two C one to describe correctly in advance of or without knowledge of the event. To describe correctly in advance of or without knowledge of the event. Synonym is predict. Two C two. To name or specify in advance, as in, call the toss of a coin. Three, to temporarily transfer control of computer processing to, as a subroutine or procedure. And then a synonym, I don't know if it's this, I think it's a synonym for the whole thing. The all of these definitions, the synonym is summon. We have some phrases. That's going to take us into the next column. There's a bunch. Call a spade a spade. Number one for that. To call a thing by its right name, however coarse. Number two, to speak frankly. Next phrase, call for. One, to call, as at one's house, to get. Let's try that one again. To call, to get. That's the definition. And an example is at one's house. But then we have an actual example of how you would use this, as in, I'll call for you after dinner. But don't call me late for dinner. Two, To require as necessary or appropriate, as in, the job calls for typing skills. Also as in, the design calls for three windows. Uh, But we're going to put in a fourth window. Next phrase, call forth. Synonyms are elicit and evoke, as in, these events call forth great emotions. Next phrase, call in question or call into question, and that means to cast doubt upon. As in, a report calling into question the drug's effectiveness. Next phrase, call it a day. To stop for the remainder of the day or for the present, whatever one has been doing. Did I say that correctly? To stop for the remainder of the day or for the present, whatever one has been doing. Well, pretty shortly, I will be calling it a day on this recording session. But then, it's early in the day, and we have a bunch of other recording to do for other podcasts. Next is Call It Quits. To call it a day. So that one, that definition is using a different definition in its own definition. Uh, And the synonym is just quit. Next is Call Names. To address or speak of a person or thing contemptuously or offensively. Call On. One, to call upon. 
Two, to elicit a response from, as a student. As in, the teacher called on her first. Well, maybe she wasn't ready to be called on. She didn't have her presentation ready. Next phrase, call one's bluff. To challenge in order to expose an empty pretense or threat. Next phrase, call the shots. To be in charge or control. Determine the policy or procedure. Call the tune. To call the shots. Next phrase, call time. To ask for or grant a timeout. Call to Oh, like calling a timeout. Yeah. To ask for or grant a timeout. Next is call to account. To hold responsible. Synonym is reprimand. And we have one last phrase with two definitions. Call upon. One, synonyms are require and oblige, as in may be called upon to do several jobs. Two, to make a demand on, depend on, as in universities are called upon to produce trained professionals. Well, that is kind of their job. Um, so we had the word call. I guess that means I have to make a song about this word call. Uh, if I had more time, I could come up with something good with these all these phrases. Maybe I could find ones that rhyme or something. Uh, but I do not have the time to do that right now. The word is call, and there's lots of... De- Why do all my songs start... They, they're the same thing. Why There's no difference to them. Call, call, call your mother. Call your mother. Call your mother. That's it. Just call your mother. Say hello. Say I love you. That's probably good, and she will appreciate that. Um, but I'm sorry. If you are estranged or your mother is no longer with us, maybe you can call a grandparent or your other parent or a mother figure or a friend. Just call somebody and say hi. Uh, all right, that's all I got to say today. Uh, this is December 29th. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary How'd you like yesterday's episode? That was different. Uh, Okay. Uh, So the first word in this episode is also call. It is the second form. But don't worry, there's other words as well. Uh, So call is a noun from the 14th century. And you know what? I just realized I totally forgot to mention the etymology of the word call. So let's just say that real quick. It is from Old Norse kala, K-A-L-L-A, akin to the Old English hildekala, Uh, which is a battle herald from Old High German Kalon, which means to talk loudly, from OCS. What is OCS? OCS, Old Church Slavic. Old Church Slavic uh, glastu, which means voice. This is my glastu. All right, so the second form of call is a noun from the 14th century, 1A. An act of calling with the voice. Synonym is shout. Yeah, I think a lot of these are going to be very similar uh, to the ones in the last episode. 1B. An imitation of the cry of a bird or other animal made to attract it. 1C. An instrument used for calling, as in a duck call. 1D. The cry of an animal, as a bird. 2A. A request or command to come or assemble. 2B. A summons or signal on a drum, bugle, or pipe. Uh, Between that one and the last one, I'm thinking of the bat call. It's not the bat call. It's the bat signal, but it's, it's he's being called. 2C. Admission to the bar as a barrister. 2D. An invitation to become the minister of a church or to accept a professional appointment. 2E. A divine vocation or strong inner prompting to a particular course of action. What's your calling? Do you do you feel like you are meant to be doing something? What are you being called to do? I guess for some reason I feel like I'm being called to read this book to you. Really, I'm just reading it to myself out loud, which is very odd. But maybe some of you are enjoying this and listening as well. 1F, no, 2F. A summoning of actors to rehearsal, as in, the call is for 11 o'clock. I bet a lot of actors are like, ha ha ha, that is so late. I'm used to 5 a.m. calls to get in hair and makeup first. Uh, 2G, the attraction or appeal of a particular activity, condition, or place, as in, the call of the wild. 2H, 
an order specifying the number of men to be inducted into the armed services during a specified period. 2i. The selection of a play in football. I'm calling a Hail Mary. Let's throw that ball all the way down and win the game and yay. 3a. Synonyms are demand and claim. 3b. Synonyms are need and justification, as in, there's no call for such behavior. 3c. A demand for payment of money. 3d. An option to buy a specified amount of a security or commodity as a fixed price at or within a specified time. Compare to the number two definition for the word put. By the way, the, the example for a security is stock, and the example for a commodity is wheat. 3e, an instance of asking for something. Synonym is request, as in many calls for Christmas stories. But Christmas has passed. The, the book doesn't know that. Number four, synonym is roll call. Five, a short, usually formal visit. Six, the name or thing called, as in, the call was heads. Seven, the act of calling in a card game. Eight, the act of calling on the telephone. Nine, a direction or a succession of directions for a square dance rhythmically called to the dancers. Ten, a decision or ruling made by an official or of a sports contest. A sports contest. We should call them sports contests. Also, the synonym, uh, I guess it's the number one definition for the word decision, as in a tough call to make. Yeah, people get super pissed when refs make bad calls or something, but they have a very difficult job. Can you imagine being on the ground of a, like a football game and having to watch a million things all at once? I mean, I know there's like probably three or four refs down there and they're all looking for different things, but boy, they have a super tough job. As in the example, it's a tough call to make. 11. A temporary transfer of control of computer processing to a particular set of instructions as a subroutine or procedure. Uh, okay, we have a couple phrases. At call or on call. 1A. Available for use at the service of, as in thousands of men at his call. 1B. Ready to respond to a summons or command, as in a doctor on call. 2. Subject to demand for payment or return without previous notice, as in money lent at call. And then the next phrase, the last one, is within call, and that is within hearing or reach of a summons. Also subject to summons. Okay, that was call. Now we have callable, adjective from 1826, Capable of being called, specifically subject to a demand for presentation for payment, as in callable bond. Next is calla-lily. Uh, two words. First word is C-A-L-L-A, -L -L -A, and then the lily. Noun from 1868. Any of several herbs of the arum family, especially a house or greenhouse plant with a white showy spathe and yellow spadix. Or is it spadix? Don't know. Uh, it is called also just calla. Um, the genus name is Zentadesia, and the greenhouse plant scientific name is Zentadesia Ethiopia. No, Ethiopica. Ethiopica. This is from the Greek word kalaya. K-A-L-L-A-I-A. -A -A. Did I say that right? K-A-L-L-A-I-A. -A -A. Kalea. That is uh, rooster's waddles. Uh, so maybe the calla lily looks like rooster's waddles. We're going to have to find a picture of this one. Next is kalaloo. Uh, let's see. Kalaloo. Or you could emphasize the first syllable, which would be kalaloo. Kalaloo or kalaloo. Noun from 1892. One the edible young green leaves of a plant, as taro, or a member of the genus Xanthosoma, of the Arum family used as greens. And number two, a soup or stew made with greens, onions, and crab meat or pork. Kalaloo. 
So this is a Caribbean English, perhaps ultimately of African origin, akin to the Caribbean Spanish word Kalalu uh, with a U at the end, which is Kalalu, that is the greens dish. Um, and also the Brazilian Portuguese word Kararu, also from Haitian Creole, Kalalu, spelled K-A-L-A-L-O-U, which means okra. So these are definitely related. I mean, th yes, this must come from African origin because they all have very similar words that probably are uh, pronounced very similarly. They're spelled very similarly, uh, and they mean similar things. Gr greens, dish, okra, all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's cool. It's cool to see how it moves around the world and changes and uh, evolves a little bit. All right, next is call and response. Three words with hyphens. Noun from 1879. A statement quickly followed by an answering statement. A statement quickly followed by an answering statement. Also, a musical phrase in which the first and often solo part is answered by a second and often ensemble part. Hey guys, what you doing? We're doing nothing. Yeah, that's sort of a terrible call and response. So we had call, callable, calla lily, calla -loo, call and response. Well, I think I'm just going to pick callaloo as the word of the episode because I like the etymology and because it is also a fun word to say. Um, all right, so now comes the brain part, the, tar the part of the show where my brain shuts down and I have to do something. Um, okay, um, I don't know where to start with this callaloo word. Um, in Caribbean Spanish, no, see, all the songs are the same. All the songs are the same. Why can't I do something different? Um, I don't know. I'm blanking. I'm totally blanking. This is the worst possible thing that could ever happen. Kalalu. Other languages say Kararu. And then the other ones look the same. All right. I'm feeling very terrible about this, but we're going to move on. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.